Hi, I'm Rob Johnstone, Editor-in-Chief of the Woodworkers Journal Magazine. I just got done making this mahogany butler tray using CNC technology, our CNC Shark, to do the machining for me. The programming was done by Ralph Bagnell, who is a frequent contributor to the Woodworkers Journal. If you'd like access to that programming, it's available for download as well. All I had to do was load it into the machine, fire it up, and then figure out how to make all these cuts. It was a little trickier than I thought, but even a novice like myself was able to get it done. So, would you like to see how to do it? Here, let me show you how. Before I started on the mahogany stock seen here, I first tested the program files using MDF scrap material. You can see the outlines of those efforts cut into the surface of the half-inch MDF backer board that is clamped to the CNC machine's bed. When through cutting stock, as is done in this butler tray project, you must have a backer board of some sort. The piece being machined here is one of the two small side handles. The hinge pockets are cut in a series of steps that accommodate the shape and depth of the hinges. The handle cutouts are formed in a series of cuts stepping down until the waist is cut free. In addition to the clamps that hold the stock in place, I used carpet tape to keep the wood from shifting as the CNC machine does its work. The final machining step on this piece is cutting the entire side handle to shape. It takes several passes of the router bit to complete the process. While the CNC machine does do all the shaping and cutting, you still need to deal with woodworking details and challenges. For example, while making this project, I dealt with warped wood, bit breakage, and panel glue up. When the small side handles are done, I moved on to the large side handles. They are longer but have the same shaped hinge pockets. As with the small side handles, the CNC's programming ensures that the two pieces are exactly the same in every respect. When both large side handles have been machined and cut out, take them off the CNC bed, then go ahead and step over to your router table. I used an eighth inch bearing guided roundover bit to nicely break the edges of the side handles. Round over the edges of the handle cutout, and then the long curved edges of the side handles. After that is done, you can move on to the step that everyone loves, sanding. The tray section of this project is the last piece that needs to be made. Once again, the hinge pockets are machined to size and depth, but these hinge pockets are shaped differently from the ones on the side handles. The tray hinge pockets have small rectangular mortises cut deeper into the pockets that provide room for the spring-loaded sections of the butler tray hinges. This is one area where CNC routing really shines. The exact nature of CNC router allows for a perfect fit once you have the programming dialed in accurately. There are eight hinge pockets on the tray section, so you can see how helpful that programming can be. That accuracy, of course, includes the placement of the hinge pockets on the tray and the side handles. All in all, those details make this butler tray project a great first effort for CNC routing. It's an attractive project and it's extremely practical. So that's just how easy it was. The machine did most of the work. If you'd like to make this project, you can download our programming right from our website, or you can build it analog, the old-fashioned way, using the drawings and the step-by-step -step instructions that we've provided. As always, take care of yourself, make some sawdust, and thanks for watching.